A whole lot of population is a big fan of coffee, also known as mocha. On the other side of the world, a whole lot of people are still a fan of chai, also known as tea. Me myself is again a fan of iced tea, only iced tea, nothing else. Let's get started. Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and let's continue back our MongoDB series. I know I have been gone for a little bit while, I was recording a couple of other video series, but now I have got some free time, that means more awesome videos on YouTube. Let's get started. So now what's the plan of moving into MongoDB series? Now so far we have talked a whole lot about uh, create uh, entire CRUD stuff, create, read, update and delete on MongoDB. Then we moved a little bit on to the relationships as well. These are only the essential part of a MongoDB. Surely MongoDB can be discussed in a whole lot of detail further, but I believe that when we move on into a project level approach, it's much more clear. So from this video onwards, we're gonna be moving into a kind of a basic project which is going to help you a lot. Now, if I had to create a project just with MongoDB, it would be just one video. There's not much to discuss. We can just do create, read, update, and delete very quickly there. Of course, a couple of models and other videos. Okay, anyways. Now, what we're gonna do, our approach is gonna be really simple. We will be creating a simple backend for a kind of a new tube, kind of a replica for YouTube. Users will be having, uh, we are gonna just approach on to students. So there will be an account of students and they're gonna post uh, videos, they're gonna post stories. So kind of a replica that we are trying to create for YouTube instead of, we are gonna call it as new tube. So that's one thing. So what are the essential things that we are going to need with that? First and foremost, together in this video, we're gonna talk and read the documentation about Mocha, which is very essential because we'll be using that. Now, in case you don't like Mocha, there is another option, which is Chai. Uh, definitely, they are almost very, very similar, very close to each other but they do have certain differences as well. So you might want to dig up into the documentation. Once you're comfortable with the mocha, the moving uh, the phase into the chai is gonna be relatively easy for you. So that's the one thing that we will be using. Another choice is gonna be mongoose. This mongoose is like a kind of a connection guy between your MongoDB and easier way of writing the code. So it's a pretty popular one. Almost everybody uses this. Surely we do have other options as well, but I think uh, nobody closes down to this one. Again, you can see the stars on the GitHub as well. So pretty good choice. So we'll be using this one as well. And the final, last but not the least, is gonna be Nodemon. This is totally optional in case you don't want to use it. Uh, you can just skip this part. There's no such big deal, no such big hurry about using Nodemon. It's totally an optional. Mongoose, no, 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 that's not optional. That we need for sure. So I highly recommend you to check out the documentation about the Mongoose. Just click on the read docs. And definitely a lot of this is gonna be something we will be discussing, something like creating a model, how we do that, uh, this whole thing about creating them, exporting them. So we will be talking about them. Today, in this video, we're gonna talk about Mocha. So this Mocha is pretty popular and it's very easy. The entire testing of the backend, especially the MongoDB database is done most of the time using Mocha. Now why, why do we need these kinds of testing? In an actual production environment, everything needs to go through testing. Otherwise, there are gonna be a lot of user bad experience and things are not gonna work the way you expect them to work. So that's why the Mocha comes into place and we have to write a variety of tests for them. So we'll be doing that uh, while creating our MongoDB project. And you can see, uh, they got a whole lot of bunch of sponsors. Everybody loves it. And now we're gonna look on to some of the documentation of this MongoDB. And you can see there is a feature list. There's a table of content list as well. Let's quickly go ahead and read the documentation together so that you get a little bit brief idea. The most important thing that we are looking up for is hooks and lifecycle events of this Mocha. Installation is pretty simple. We can do that. Uh, we will not be using exactly this syntax because we don't want to install it globally. We want to install it only on the project base. So we saw that it's pretty easy to install npm install and then Mocha. So pretty, pretty easy stuff. Now again, one thing that you will notice here is gonna be this asserts. The entire testing suite always works on assert. Assert is kind of an assumption of going everything as true. If anything just falls back or just goes a false result, we stop the thing uh, immediately there. So that's one thing you keep in mind. Assert is always gonna be appearing quite a lot and we need to require that at the very top. After that, you're gonna see a couple of describe blocks and it blocks. Uh, you can assume that this describe block is a whole big block and inside this big block, there are a lot of it, 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 ITs. Uh, these ITs are actual tests that we perform and then describe is something that we definitely are gonna check that in a moment. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So now that we have got a couple of things, uh, we need to install it, we need to require an assert and we're gonna have a describe method which further takes a lot of it. Don't sweat it out. It's much more easier than reading the documentation. I just want to give these uh, 
terminologies into your head so that when we work actually them, you know them. That's not the first time. Okay. Apart from this, uh, you can leave the uh, rest of these stuffs. It's not much as for us right now. Surely later on you might want to read them. Now let's go ahead at a little bit bottom where it says hooks and let me just find out. There we go. So these are the hooks which is going to be super useful for us a little bit later. And you can see we have got a whole lot of hooks here. The first one is before, then we have got after, then we have got a before each, then we have got an after each. The difference between them is uh, before actually runs only one time. Whenever you are making up your test, before runs only one time. While on the other hand, before each uh, can be run like before any single event, you can keep on running it, keep on running it. A good example would be if I want to check the connection of my database, whether it is connected or not, I would like to do it just once. So it's going to be before. But on the other hand, if I'm trying to do a test on cre create any uh, user into the database or create or updating any user in the database, definitely I would like to do a before each and in the before each, I would like to delete that user before running the test because otherwise it will be a whole lot of users in my database and that's not a good thing. So a perfect example would be again before for just checking out the connection and before each running uh, probably a drop off database or deleting all the users or flushing out the entire tables not the tables actually documents because we are in the MongoDB world so flushing out all the uh, documents in the MongoDB so that would be one of the case surely we can have similar examples for after and after each so that's one thing you might want to keep in mind okay after hooks, uh, we are going to be definitely looking up something known as asynchronously. Uh, there is something known as done in this. So I leave that as a later on exploration we'll be doing. But my advice would be, I know you will not be able to get much out of it. But still, just stare at this documentation. It's always a good start. And just try to have a look on this. I don't expect you to learn anything from it at all. But still, it's a good idea just even to stare at the documentation because for a lot of you, it might be the very first time. So that's it. That's all I wanted to convey this information in this video. And we are starting back with our MongoDB series. In the next video, we're going to be firing up our VS Code and we'll be creating a project. In case you want to use any other editor, be my guest. There is no such big deal. I will be using VS Code for the next. So catch you up in the next video with the VS Code and let's create our very first project in MongoDB and using Mocha.